<laughs> oh, hey there, fish keepers. I'm not quite feeling well right now. But luckily, I was familiar with a physician who could provide me with the right prescription for any illness. Whew. <clears throat> but has the thought ever occurred to you of what you might do for your fish if they feel as concerned about their health? You'll likely head straight to the nearest fish shop or veterinarian because it's the best action. However, as the owner, you must be knowledgeable about fish care and what medications you can provide to ill fish. That's right, being a fish keeper also holds a great responsibility. It was like being a parent to a child committed to providing them with the proper care for better health. And since we know how important it is to be knowledgeable in this hobby, we prepared a list of the best 9 antibiotics for fish in today's video. All you have to do is relax on your couch and listen closely, because another valuable discussion is coming your way here at Aquarium Store Depot. With ill fish is complicated. Knowing when a fish is sick and figuring out if it's due to a parasite, an illness, or anything else can be challenging. Making the correct diagnosis and beginning treatment requires a lot of work, and sadly, many enthusiasts discover these illnesses too late. Many of these ailments develop overnight, leaving a fish pet that appeared healthy the day before struggling for oxygen at the bottom of the tank. In situations like these, a quarantine system and a selection of drugs can help. Antibiotics are among these drugs, which are used to treat bacterial infections. But how do fish antibiotics function in aquarium settings? Let's discuss it briefly before going to our main list. But before we do, there are some disclaimers I need to provide. Aquarium Store Depot does not intend to provide veterinary advice. We go to great lengths to help users better understand their fish. However, all content on this channel are for informational purposes only. We are not vets and we are not here to promote or endorse any vet practice. We do this content about diseases because we know how hard it is to talk to a vet about fish diseases and how hard it is to talk to a good hobbyist. Always do your research, follow the manufacturer instructions on the medication, and if you can consult a vet, do so if possible. Okay, so now that our lawyers are happy, let's continue. Understanding that fish antibiotics won't instantly heal fish of their diseases is crucial. Instead. Fish medicines slow down bacterial population growth until the fish's immune system has time to heal and develop resistance naturally. Simply put, fish antibiotics disrupt the physiological processes and reproduction of bacteria, which slows or prevents their development and spread. Gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria are the two primary categories of bacterial illnesses you must be aware of in an aquarium environment. So, what exactly are these two types of bacteria? Gram-positive bacteria have an outer membrane enclosing a thin cell wall. Infections caused by gram-positive bacteria are less frequent in aquarium settings and typically involve streptococcus infections. Meanwhile, gram-negative bacteria don't have an exterior membrane. Instead, they contain substantial polymer layers. Gram-negative bacteria such as Aeromonas, Flavobacterium, Vibrio, and Pseudomonas are responsible for most aquatic bacterial illnesses. But how could I know if these bacteria infected my fish? Injuries, poor water quality, and malnutrition all contribute to infection. If water quality is good and nutrition is maintained, your fish should be able to resist disease. However, occasionally even the toughest pet fish might succumb to hazardous germs. When it comes to figuring out what type of bacterial infection your fish has, the best way is via a gram strain, which most hobbyists don't have access to. We can note, however, that gram-negative infections are far worse and deadlier than gram-positive infections. Come check out the list of signs that might appear if your fish has a bacterial illness on your screen. Now that you know what these bacterias are and the possible symptoms, it's time to break down the 9 best antibiotics for fish in this list. First, let's talk about the Thomas Lab Cephalexin or the Keyflex. Fishflex and Fishflex Forte are two different grades of fish antibiotics offered by Thomas Lab Cephalexin. Although this antibiotic is listed for ornamental fish, hobbyists have discovered that it works best against invertebrate bacterial infections, notably those that affect anemones. This highly broad-spectrum fish antibiotic must be given for 5 to 10 days in a quarantine system or bath. Second is the Thomas Lab Ciprofloxacin. The antibiotic is available in two grades from Thomas Labs, Fish Flox and Fish Flox Forte. Cephalexin is frequently used to treat anemones and other invertebrates. However, Ciprofloxacin is far more efficient as a fish antibiotic. 
per gram negative bacterial infections, this medication can precisely be dosed in a bath or a quarantine tank over five to seven days. Third is the Thomas Labs amoxicillin. Amoxicillin is a highly well-liked antibiotic for use in humans and other animals. Amoxicillin is a potent course of fish antibiotics. However, it's rarely used in aquariums. The Thomas Laboratories Fish Mox and Fish Mox Forte are available through Thomas Labs. Amoxicillin along with penicillin and ampicillin are one of the few fish antibiotics that are used to treat gram-positive bacterial infections, if for no other reason. These fish antibiotics should be delivered for five days in a quarantine tank or bath treatment and not be used with invertebrates. Nevertheless, fish enthusiasts choose other antibiotics first. Now, one frequently asked question in the hobby is if it's terrible to use amoxicillin in the aquarium. The answer is this. Amoxicillin from aquarium brands can be used in aquariums, although hobbyists typically look for alternatives first. Although amoxicillin is frequently used to treat people and other animals, it serves no use in an aquarium environment. Amoxicillin is only effective for treating a few conditions, including fungal infections of the eyes. Also, just a reminder if it ever crossed your mind, never put antibiotics meant for human use in aquariums, and the reverse. To give you a personal story, Mark, the founder of Aquarium Store Depot, actually ended up on MSNBC Nightly News during the COVID pandemic when he refused to sell chloroquine phosphate meant for fish to humans. One vendor actually ended up selling to a person and they ingested it. That man was from Arizona and ended up dying. The active ingredient percentages are way different when compounded for fish and for humans. Now, let's jump to our fourth medicine on the list, the nitrofurosin green powder. One of the most often used antibiotics for aquariums is nitrofurosin green powder. It can also be used in quarantine tanks as a healing agent. Methylene blue, nitrofurazone, and sulfathiazole sodium, which all destroy nitrifying bacteria, are also present in this product. In addition to treating the infection, nitrofurosin green powder is beneficial for treating cuts and abrasions. Numerous hobbyists believe that nitrofurosin green powder is a speedier and more efficient substitute for API furin 2. Taking nitrofurosin green powder for at least 10 days is recommended. Fifth, try the Seachem Canaplex plus Seachem Metroplex plus API furin 2. Fish antibiotics such as the API Furin 2, Seachem Canaplex, and Metroplex are frequently dosed simultaneously. These three drugs have a great deal of potential for treating various illnesses. Check where this medicine can be used on your screen. Although it can take up to three weeks, Metroplex should be taken simultaneously daily. This antibiotic, derived from metronidazole, treats three anaerobic bacterial infections, Cryptocarion, Hexameda, and Ichthyopterius. Metroplex is mainly utilized for ick, velvet, and lateral line erosion, hexameda SPP, spironucleus vortens. Through a seven-day nitrofurazone-based therapy, API furin 2 targets bacteria in the gram-positive and gram-negative range. This medication mainly combats the following illnesses on your screen. Sixth on the list is the Seachem Sulfaplex plus Neoplex. Seachem Sulfaplex and Neoplex can be taken concurrently or independently. Depending on the ailment, a broad sulfathiazole-based antibiotic called Sulfaplex treats bacterial, fungal, and protozoan infections. Although this product may be utilized in both freshwater and saltwater environments, saltwater is where it works best. Sulfaplex can specifically be used to treat fin rot, hemorrhagic septicemia, fur coat syndrome, mouth rot, and fungi. Neoplex is a different, all-encompassing medication based on neomycin sulfate that treats exterior illnesses such as fin rot, bacterial sores, bloat, and mouth rot. The majority of hobbyists say it works similarly to topical neosporin. Although these medications can be dosed for up to three weeks, they should be taken for at least seven days. Seventh is the API Triple Sulfa. Since API Triple Sulfa won't eradicate all nitrifying bacteria, it's one of the safer fish antibiotic treatments for aquariums. However, to be safe, filter media should be removed before dosage, and ammonia and nitrate levels should be consistently watched. The use of sulfa drugs is somewhat old-fashioned. Many hobbyists use harsher substitutes, including furin-2, due to some resistance to these treatments. If necessary, API Triple Sulfa has the advantage of being gentle on the ecology in the display tank. Gram-negative bacteria, including those that result in hemorrhagic septicemia, bacterial gill disease, fin rot, cottonmouth diseases, body slime, and cloudy eyes. Going eighth is enrofloxacin. 
One of the most recent treatments for bacterial infections in fish is enrofloxacin 2, although it is still best given in a quarantine tank or during 5-hour baths. Even though it works, this medication can be hard to get. Batril from Bayer Pharmaceuticals is the most widely available. This fluoroquinolone antibiotic has a quick onset and is effective against gram-positive and gram-negative infections. And finally, the last medicine on our list is the AAP spectrogram. Since 2021, it's become harder to get fish antibiotics, most likely due to the tighter pharmaceutical controls brought on by the COVID-19 epidemic. When it comes to treating both gram-negative and gram-positive bacterial illnesses, AAP spectrogram can be helpful. This fish medication combines Canaplex and Furin-2, Canamycin nitrofurazone. However, it is significantly more user-friendly and efficient. Infections other than parasitic ones can be treated with it. Different fish antibiotics will be more effective depending on the kind and severity of the infection. The majority of these antibiotics for fish may be used in freshwater, brackish water, and saltwater systems. However, it's advised to read all directions carefully. And that's the list of the nine best antibiotics for your lovely fish. However, that's only part of what I will discuss in today's video, because we'll now try to understand how these antibiotics move from the water into your fish using three methods, starting with the bath treatments. When fish refuse to feed or there are other restrictions, bath treatments are the best option for treating exterior illnesses. When there's no access to a quarantine system that enables fish antibiotics to be directly dosed into the tank, bath treatments work best. However, the issue with bath treatments is that only a little of the medication gets into the fish's circulation. The continual moving of the fish can also be stressful and harmful, to the point where the fish can die from transfer stress. Another method to try is antibiotic-treated food. Food that has been combined with fish antibiotics is the most significant therapy for bacterial illnesses. To prevent the fish medicines from leaking into the meal, a binding agent like Seachem Focus is needed. Large amounts of the drug can be given using this technique. It does, however, need that the fish is still actively feeding, indicating that the infection has not yet seriously affected the fish. Still, tactics like using garlic or live food occasionally work to stimulate appetite. Lastly, while many hobbyists may not have access to this option, injection is a feasible line of therapy. An injection is the best and most efficient way to treat infections in large, pricey fish like Oscars or koi. But the typical hobbyist either doesn't have fish this size or a fish vet willing to see their fish. The aquarium can safely employ any drug that is designated for aquarium usage. Following instructions carefully is critical because it's possible to overdose on some medicines. However, there is one thing you ought to stay away from. Natural drugs. Because some of these organic substitutes include tannins and natural oils that, although appearing healthy, are either harmful to your fish's health or require such a high concentration where it's not reasonable to use as a form of medication. I encourage you all to look at studies from reliable resources like the University of Florida and the National Laboratory of Medicine. In fact, here's a link to the study about tannins and antibiotics in the card above so you can read about it yourself. I know we're not functioning quite well when we're sick, but please never use antibiotics that were intended only for fish. This could seriously endanger your health please consult your primary physician in a medical emergency like I do. <laughs> Just don't use fish medications on yourself. Otherwise, Mark may get asked to go on NSNBC again. I hope you learned a lot from this video, fish keepers. I still got a lot to tell you. Fortunately, you can see more about this subject when you visit our official website at AquariumStoreDepot.com where detailed information about natural antibiotics, places where you can buy various fish medicine, and frequently asked questions are posted. You could also visit our YouTube channel to find the next fish you'll adopt soon into your aquarium. More than you would have imagined, fish antibiotics have a variety of uses. It might be challenging to spot a bacterial illness in your fish, but thanks to us, treatment doesn't have to be tough. We'll talk soon again about our next fascinating topic, fish keepers. Thank you for watching. Oh, you should also look at the thumbnails of the videos on your screen. See you again.